Hello and welcome to my floss tube number two. This is my creative corner and my name is Vicki. I am somebody who loves to do all kinds of crafts and if you've never been here before I have shown quite a few of these ideas and crafts, quilting, um, using my Cricut machine, a whole bunch of other things on my channel. But today is going to be all about my floss tube, which is my cross stitch. And the things that I've been working on, um, I am a really slow stitcher. And so I have done my second project in 20 some years. <laughs> and I have rediscovered my love of doing cross stitch. Um, currently, I am working on a uh, stitch along. There we go. Stitch along with m the Fat Quarter Shop and they invited me to join in on the You're the Boss Lori Holt stitch along. So I will show you that and I will show you some of the things that I'm going to be working on in September. September is Fat Quarter Shop's uh, stitching is Sunflower September. So I have found a free petite sunflower pattern on Fat Quarter Shop and I have found a treasure trove of books. I showed you a couple of them last week but this week I really dug through the books and I found a fantastic book. So let's hop over to the table and I will show you what I've been working on and some of the ideas I have for September. I am working on the You Are the Boss Stitch Along with Fat Quarter Shop. We're supposed to be somewhere over in here. Now the beauty of this particular stitch along is you can customize the phrase that Lori has made very, very popular. And um, I don't know what I'm going to put in the middle. You are the boss of, I don't know, your project, your own quilt, your life. There's a free alphabet you can download. I may pr work on that uh, as I get closer to the end. This is the only project that I have been working on and I have discovered I am a very slow stitcher. Yep, that's as far as I've gotten. It's, <laughs> it's not very far. But it's progress. This is the second stitch that I have done since my first stitch quite a while ago. And I feel like I'm getting better and better as I stitch along. The first square, let me flip it over here. This one um, was my first one. There's, you know, a little bit uh, left to be improved upon. And it has gotten better with each square that I have done. So these little quilt inspired blocks are some of my favorite. I love the color. This is a Zwiegart um, l linen color. Could be um, cappuccino. It is a 14 count Ada cloth. And Lori used a white, uh, it was in her pattern calls for cloud, but it wasn't available. So the yellow, I probably should have changed the yellow because it doesn't stand out quite as much as it could if it were a white background. But I think for my first stitch along, I'm pretty proud of where I'm at. I have a cute little neodymium magnet needle minder and I am not traditional. I have been using a tulip very sharp large self threading needle. I know it, you have to be very careful not to saw through your floss and I am using the called for colors in the pattern DMC embroidery floss. 
So what I've been doing is I've been buying, not buying, I was inspired by Lori's design boards and I bought foam core online because I don't have a, I don't have a fa uh, fabric or craft store, excuse me, I don't have a craft store in my town. I have a quilt shop, but they don't carry anything like this. And I had some leftover um, jelly rolls and what I'm using currently is this to sort my threads out. Now it's not the most, um, I don't know, traditional way of doing it. Uh, I'm working on making some floss drops with my Cricut. I showed you those last week, but I need to make more. I'm hoping I have time to do that this afternoon. So this is a foam core with, I glued flannel. Lori uses batting. And then I glued a binding just like you would do in quilting where you take a two and a half inch strip and you iron it in half and then you iron it in quarters and you fold your edges under. And you can use both sides. Lori has a complete tutorial on how to make it on her YouTube channel. And you might want to make them, but you can buy them at Fat Quarter Shop pre-made. I also have sew tights that I'm using for a needle holder. And look, it's strong enough. It holds it through the foam core board. And I'm using a sew tight for my line guide. I like this one. They do come in longer. It's a neodymium magnets that you can take apart and then the magnets are strong enough you can put them together and they will make a great needle minder or a line guide for your pattern. So that's all I've been working on. Those are all of my works in progress. I thought I'd show you a cute project bag that a friend of mine made at a quilt group. She does hexagons and I love making hexagons. At the end of the floss tube part, I'll show you a couple of quilt projects that I'm working on. But this project bag, I think is a pattern that you can find online. It's a basic bag. She appliqued her cross stitch. And what are these? Well, my goodness, it opens and what she used in here for this snappy part is an old worn out tape measure and in the bottom I have the rest of my floss and eventually I'll have my thread drops in there for this project and I may make some more of uh, these are the perfect size to hold a lot of my cross stitching projects. The floss um, maybe a tiny pattern maybe a tiny project and it stays shut because of the metal tape measure that was cut to length and put in this top. You can see how she just threaded it through as she made a pocket in here. And I'll show you, there's the raw edge and she zigzagged it very nicely. Uh, she's a fantastic quilter. So since I'm new to cross stitch, I bought the floss through a thread pack for You're the Boss through Fat Quarter Shop. And Fat Quarter Shop is doing Sunflower September. And so I printed off, this is a free pattern um, you can get at Fat Quarter Shop. And it's called um, Petite Stitches. It's a Fat Quarter Shop exclusive that you can download. And it had all of the thread right here. And we had a tornado um, in May. Yeah, about the same time I got COVID. It was horrible. It's a horrible week. And we only had one craft store in town. That's Hobby Lobby. 
and I don't think they carried DMC threads. I didn't know by the time I got into cross stitch and needing specific threads, they were gone. And I'm like, you know, I wish I could just buy each of these skeins. There's got to be a way I can do it online without having to buy a hundred skeins of DMC floss. Well, my, my, my. I went online and I found everything cross stitch. Now I'm bringing this up because I'm a brand new stitcher during the internet age. And so this website was amazing. I picked out the exact colors I wanted in DMC floss. It, it didn't cost very much. And bingo, there is my floss. <laughs> Every single color. Here is all the colors I needed for the sunflower. And I have left over Ada from the two projects I've done. And there's, oh, is there thread in there for a Halloween pack? Well, there sure is. So I was thrilled. It was a very good price. Shipping was not much money. And so Sunflower September. I'm going to start with doing Fat Quarter Shop's free pattern for this petite sunflower. I think it's so cute. I'm just going to stitch it up. It's a three by three. And I thought that would be really, really adorable, maybe on a project bag like the one I just showed you. Um, because the hexagons that she used are super tiny and I don't have eyesight. That's that good. <laughs> So let me show you the other things that I have discovered in my antique vintage, they're vintage, not antique, vintage books. Um, my husband's grandmother loved leisure arts books. And here is a vintage one called Quick as a Wink. And I thought, you know, I'm going to look in here because I like these faster projects because I don't want to get bogged down in another multi-decade project. This book is pristine. She did not cross stitch but she loved to collect craft books and I just kept opening it up. Oh my goodness this was published in 1996. I gotta show you the publishing date right here 1996. So she got this either in the late 90s or the early 2000s. And I thought, I know this is kind of um, 1980s fabulous with uh, some of the way they present things and with the products that were available. Oh my goodness, the first thing I saw when I opened this book up was this sunflower. Now, I don't particularly like the heart shape final finish on this. What? There it is. Let's turn it. Oh yes, there's geese and country blue up here. But we're looking at the potential of modern use of these vintage patterns. And I super love the sunflower. However, it has everything backstitched. And I have not done backstitching in uh, 20 years. So that might not be my first sunflower out of this book, but I super love it. And look, it even has a welcome to our home chart. I feel that this book is so old, it's okay to show the vintage patterns um, because I found this book used is quite expensive. Now look at all of the bees. And here's some real pretty um, very, very soft and feminine flowers. But I got flipping through this again and toward the back. Look at this. Oh, here's my little book. I like to make crafts on my Cricut. And I, I'm using this as a bookmark, but it's not. It's a tiny journal. I love tiny things in a journal. And this is paper that's supposed to be like leather. And look, I sewed um, the center. And I watercolored these little doodles that I turned into stickers on the pages. 
So I made this this year, my tiny journal. The world changed, but I can come through it stronger. And um, I just don't know what to write in it. I spent a couple of, I did fill a couple of pages, but I thought I'd share, this is something else. I did do a little video on how I made this book. But look, here are seed packets. What is more adorable? Not much in my book. I love this. So this particular small sunflower packet, I am going to do, and look at how cute it is with the seeds. And this particular stitch says that it is 1.8 inches tall. And all of these together are 10 inches wide. Now this is not my thing up here, but I do like this, but I like the sunflower a lot. But look, there's a pumpkin. Ooh, I might have to make this whole thing a month at a time. Oh, this is book. I'm telling you, it is a treasure trove. And someone looked it up and told me in a used bookstore it was $75. I'm like, are you kidding me? But look, here is the bonus sunflower of the book. It is a bread basket. It's a liner, you know, a cloth. But they put chips in it and made a sunflower cheese ball. Oh my goodness. Yeah. But look at the border, the sunflower border. I do like that. And I think it's pretty similar to the seed packet, but this is very small and I love it. And if I want to follow the exact color layout, I can go to the Everything Cross Stitch website and I'll look at this cheese ball. You gotta love it. It's sunflower kernels, cream cheese, blue cheese. Not a fan of blue cheese, but I would put more cream cheese. Celery, green onion, sour cream, chicken, bouillon, red peppers, and tortilla chips. Oh my gosh. I might have to make that for my own personal football party. Because I don't have lots of parties anymore. But they just is so much. I think something I might want to do over time is stitch all of the super cute projects in this book. It is a treasure trove. So if you find this book, quick as a wink, at a thrift store or yard sale, pick it up. It is full of things that are full of potential. So I'm going to do the Fat Quarter Shops Sunflower September, but I'm going to try to pick a couple of sunflower patterns out of this book. We'll see how many I can get done. Um, and the other thing is, I might make some of them to be a bookmark. This is a test that I made. It's using pearl cotton and large, um, one strand of pearl over two 14 count atom. And I sewed it to a very, very thick felt back. You can see my stitching. And then for good measure, I put a bead of fabric glue along the edge so it wouldn't ravel. And it seems to be holding up. So I thought, wouldn't some of those little sunflower things make great bookmarks for the grandkids? So that is some ideas for September. And I found I did this quilt last year. And I will put a link in the description box to a finished quilt top. I need to quilt it this October. Oh, I'm, if you want to listen to my podcast about the languishing I have on a few projects. But this is another free Fat Quarter Shop pattern, and I really liked it. It's, it only has four colors. This is up my alley. I thought this was super cute with the bats in the corners and these little quilt block triangles. 
Let me hold it up a little closer. And the border with the ghosts in the corner. Oh, it's cute. And look at how they finished it using, I think, a sticky board over a fabric covered frame or another sticky board. Love it. Free pattern doesn't look too hard to do. It prints out in black and white mostly, but the orange is there for the pumpkins and the borders. Something that I just noticed is that there is a cross hatch on the diagonal in the background that you could do if you wanted to. I might do it. I might not. We'll see how I feel. Something that I put my patterns on is this recipe or book holder from Ikea. It's bamboo and I love it. It's great for putting my patterns on while I'm sitting at my chair under my light. And it holds it up perfectly. So that's the extent of my ideas and patterns for cross stitch. So I thought I'd share a little bit about some things that I like to do. I showed you my little journal and I decided I wanted to try doing my, I like doing Zentangle and doodles. I like to make them into stickers like for this book. And I did an experiment um, about 18 months ago of putting, using an IdentiPen on fabric. And I stiffened it up by ironing this to freezer paper. And it looks great. I thought, wouldn't this be fun to do like placemats with? This is supposed to be permanent. Like you're supposed to use it as identipens for laundry, writing in shirts or things like that to identify the clothes. But I've used it on several projects and I love how it turned out. I mean, pull it just a wee bit closer. Yeah, it's just doodles. I'm mean, not an artist, but I love doodling. And Zentangle is a great way to relax and do a mindfulness. And I enjoy doing Zentangle. So that crops up in my projects from time to time. And it's something that I'll do in streaks. I also love doing English paper piecing and I did these last year. I found um, these Halloween scraps left over and then I um, just stitched them up. I thought they'd be great on just a, maybe a project bag or a purse. I may make more and do an entire Halloween scrappy themed quilt. And I also have, these were left over from a project where I did nothing but make hexagons with B themes. So let's put these more in frame. And I thought these are cute. I love this one, workers and dreamers. This one is, I just love this particular black. These two don't have, they're just kind of they don't have a lot of color in them, but they would be great and just worked in like a three in a row table runner or just weaved in a large project. And then I have just a couple of others that I've hand stitched with practicing fussy cutting is what this was about. Oh wait, I found another one. This one's cute too with the B fabric with brighter colors. So I like doing English paper piecing and I'm going to pick that up this winter. And what I, here's my, oh, sorry, the camera's wiggling. Here's my paper piecing box of goodies. I have a travel Altoid tin and I put my English paper piecing things in it. It has another sew type magnet. 
holding my needle. This is a special, very thin English paper piecing needle. And then I have tea tiny little scissors that are great for paper piecing and cross stitch. I have a couple of clips and I use this thimble when I travel. It's uh, great just for hand sewing. So if you want an easy and quick uh, little to-go box, the Altoid tin works out fabulously. I bought this panel. It's a Lori Holt Prairie. I just thought it would be great to use as a back for some of my English paper piecing products. Recently, I purchased these online. And let's see if you can see the entire collection. So I have a lot of ideas going for making just a color wash hexagon quilt. I love this stitch. It's super cute too. Because I started making more hexagons. Oh wait, I've got these earlier this summer. I fell in love with Liberty. Now this is not Liberty of London. This is Liberty by Riley Blake, which is cotton. And here is the collection. I like to buy these five inch pre-cuts because it's easy to use them and cut on my one inch hexagons. I'm kind of sad that the sun went behind the clouds. This one's pretty, isn't it? And I thought these would all go together really, really quite well. I bought these all on uh, when I was, I think in Mother's Day, right before I got COVID in May. So I thought these would go great because I spent a um, big, big amount of money on these actual Liberty of London pre-cuts. They're tan lawn, which is a very fine, fine fabric. And look, all of these are, she sent me like, I think I bought a pack of like 80, I don't know, of these pre-cuts and they are all different hexagon or um, squares that I glued on my hexagons that I cut out on my Cricut. And so these are going to be in the color wash quilt. These are just leftovers that I had from a lot of hexagon, um, we did hexi exchanges. So you make a bunch of hexagons and I sent them out in the mail and you can see there's quite a bit. And here's another B one. These are just random. I mean, just a bunch of random different things. And I have a couple of other pumpkin-y colors. I may make another orange Halloween fall themed. So these are just random leftovers from projects. And this is not the Identa pen. This is my Zentangle pen, which I use the Micron one. So that is what I'm going to be working on this winter. I've put a pause. I'm going to show you on a quilt that I've been working on. I was doing a sew along this summer and it was a sew along, crochet along, and cross stitch along with the great granny squared by Lori Holt. And this particular Granny Square Pat quilt is the one we were making. You need 20 of these blocks to make this quilt and then you will have um, this pieced border and the squares for the sashing. But there's all of these patterns in the book and I just have been struggling this summer since I got COVID the second time in July. 
And so I'm putting a pause on this particular pattern. I showed you the free granny square pattern in the bookmark. And then this is what I did with the rest of that pearl cotton is I crocheted these cute tiny granny squares, which is also part of the granny along that Lori Holt was doing. So it was a trifecta that I did a whole video on these. Um, I did, I was COVID out of my mind doing the <laughs> quilt, the granny square crocheted, and then the book marker cross stitch. So I thought, you know, uh, anybody can do these, right? You know, I can do it. And that's how I picked this up. And I'll put my thumb over the mistake I have in the middle here. Wait, we'll just put the Altoid tins on that. Um, and this is what got me hooked again on doing cross stitch. Um, cross stitching with pearl cotton is, is nice and it makes a nice size. These are about four, three, four inches wide. I can't remember. Let me measure it here. I got a, it's three inches wide. So, you know, it's a little bit big for a bookmark, but this was just a tester and to showcase their free pattern. And then I, I have been cro uh, crocheting grannies my whole life. So these were an easy thing to do when my brain was not firing on all cylinders right after I had COVID. And you had to purchase this pattern to do the quilt along. It's got lots of other, you can see there's lots of other projects in here. So the thing is, you need 20. I stopped at about 13 or 14. And I have plenty of scraps. And Kimberly at Fat Quarter Shop for quilting, they're promoting Lori Holt's Scrappiness is Happiness book, and it's Scrappy September. So I'm going to continue to try to work on this, maybe finish a couple of these blocks in September if things go well. We'll see how it goes. So that is my um, floss tube for this week. And... I want to bring back, this is my current stitch along, and I hope to, I probably won't catch up and get it done with the actual sale with Fat Quarter Shop, but this was way, way too much fun to do. If you are interested in any of the items that I showed, um, I will put a affiliate link for Fat Quarter Shop. I am an affiliate for them. And if you use that link and then search through their cross stitching supplies and quilting supplies, you don't pay anymore and I get um, a little bonus for the sale. And that helps me in keeping the YouTube channel going and all of that. And also, I'm a big upcycler. So, you know, if you needed to go, for cross stitch or English paper piecing, Alto Altoid tins are amazing. Have a great week and I will see you next time. Stitch on everybody.